Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me this Saturday. I'm Frederica Whitfield. All right, we begin this hour with new developments in the January 6th investigation. The House Committee probing the insurrection has now issued a subpoena to the U.S. Secret Service for text messages sent on January 5th and 6th of 2021. This comes after the Homeland Security's Inspector General accused the Secret Service of erasing those texts after his office requested them. The IG met with the committee yesterday, and according to a source, he told the panel the Secret Service has not fully cooperated with his probe. The Secret Service denies deleting any text maliciously. The subpoena is the first time the panel has publicly targeted an executive branch agency. CNN's Caitlin Plants joining us right now. Caitlin, uh, what more do we know about how this subpoena came about and the response and what, what are the other things the Secret Service is saying? Right, Fred. So this is a very fast moving story. We only learned that there may be a problem or confusion around these Secret Service text messages from January 5th and 6th, just three days ago, July 13th. So that is when the Department of Homeland Security Inspector General, which is an independent watchdog conducting its own uh, look into the Secret Service handling of January 6th, they flagged for Capitol Hill that there were erased or missing text messages from the Secret Service. And they were the this Inspector General was quite uh, concerned uh, that they weren't getting the cooperation that they wanted, or at least they thought that they should have from the Secret Service getting documents about January 6th. So they told Capitol Hill, then the IG went to Capitol Hill yesterday to brief all nine members of the House Select Committee about this issue, uh, that there had been erased text messages because of the data migration. Where are those? And so then the committee members emerged from that briefing being very concerned. Here's Representative Zoe Lofgren yesterday. I will say that the explanation that you have to fact reset and, and eliminate your data without backing up your data just seems, I'm skeptical. I mean, I wouldn't do that. The argument about when the uh, request was made is largely irrelevant. Uh, the Secret Service was aware that this was one of the signature events of our country and that there would be a need to preserve uh, all of the evidence because of that. And also there's a, an obligation for federal agencies to uh, retain records. So you see this amount of confusion that Lofgren is expressing there. Other committee members expressed it too about what happened. And that's what led to this subpoena last night, this late subpoena from the House Committee asking the Secret Service both for the text messages at issue here that are supposedly lost and also any after action reports that could explain what happened. Are there other records backing them up? Those sorts of things. We've also gotten statements from the Secret Service, several statements after the IG notified Capitol Hill, the Secret Service said there was nothing malicious about this. And even the, the text messages that the IG really wanted in their probe of January 6th, those weren't the things that were lost. That's what the Secret Service said a couple days ago. And then this morning, we just got another statement from them that I want to read saying they're going to be very cooperative. This is the chief of communications from the Secret Service saying the January 6th Select Committee has had our full and unwavering cooperation since its exception, inception. That does not change. Over the last 18 months, we have voluntarily provided dozens of hours of formal testimony from special agents, 790,000 unredacted emails, radio transmissions, operational and planning records. We plan to continue that cooperation by responding swiftly to the committee's subpoena. And of course, we are in a moment where the Secret Service is very much at issue of what the House Committee continues to investigate, what they witnessed around President Donald Trump on January 6th. Fred. Mm -hmm. All right, Caitlin Palance, thanks so much. Let's talk more about all this with Michael Zeldin. He is a former federal prosecutor and the host of the podcast That Said with Michael Zeldin. Uh, good to see you, Michael. So while the Secret Service is saying we have been fully cooperating, uh, what does the subpoena say about that? That the House doesn't believe them. The House would not have a need to subpoena records if those records had been previously put forth to them or that the committee felt that they were putting them forth. So there's a lot of suspicion, as Zoe Lofgren indicated in her 
in their statement there. Mm -hmm. and, and while the committee chairman, uh, Betty Thompson, you know, tells CNN the panel wants to talk with the Secret Service, um, this subpoena has now been issued. Uh, what are the questions that will likely be asked? Well, what the Secret Service has said is that the text messages that were deleted were deleted in the ordinary course as they were moving from one set of telephones to another, and that there was no malicious um, deletion of this information. What this committee says is that doesn't really make sense. If you go into an Apple phone store and you want to get a new phone, for example, they'll say, is everything backed up? And so it's sort of like, common practice that you back up everything okay. before you migrate. And so I think they just don't believe this is going on and they are suspicious of them. And that suspicion is borne out by another fact, which was that Cassidy Hutchison testified that President Trump lunged toward the Secret Service in his effort to get them to drive him to Capitol Hill. The immediate response from, Cap from the Secret Service after that was, mm -hmm. that's not true. Mm -hmm. But of course we learned today from DC Metropolitan Police that it was in fact true. So immediately there you have a disconnect between reality and what may be what the Secret yeah. Service is testifying to. Yeah, and all that, it, I mean, that's a real strike to the credibility of the Secret Service um, thus far, even though again, we still have yet to hear the full story and perhaps after the subpoena, at least the committee feels like, or is hoping that it might get um, some of those um, blanks filled in. All right, I also want to now talk to you about um, our new reporting that an Atlanta area district attorney is telling the Georgia GOP chair that he could be indicted as part of her probe into election interference. So what does this tell you about the investigation and that the DA um, would alert of a potential indictment as opposed to just serving the indictment and that would serve notice? Well, oftentimes you, in an investigation of this sort, notify the target that they are about to be indicted to give them one last chance to come in and sort of clear the air or straighten out the record or plead their innocence. So that's not unusual that a target is identified in these situations. But the fact that they have a target who may be indicted for something related to campaign fraud is significant because if there is a conspiracy here and this witness <clears throat> excuse me and this witness decides to cooperate now that he or she has been indicted um then you maybe break open a conspiracy of silence if that's what's going on and that is often what is going on hmm. um would there be any cooperation or sharing of information between the Fulton uh, County, I'm talking the Georgia Fulton County uh, DA and the January 6th uh, House Committee, um, since the goal is the same uh, in, in terms of at the center is the potential overthrowing of an election? Would there be any sharing of information because these investigations or probes are, are happening simultaneous? They can, and I expect that there would be sharing between Fulton County and the United States Department of Justice, the federal investigation. So I expect that all of these agencies, the federal, the state, and then the January 6th committee are all going to share information among themselves to make sure that each has whatever is needed for them to complete their work. 